Okay, so good afternoon. So 11.30, I will take uh, 30 to 40 minutes. Um, my focus today is, I think I'll just go back to the little bit more about the business and relate business into HR, then HR into competency. Maybe quite opposite to what Sir spoke uh, just a uh, few minutes before. Uh, because that is a profession I am in and uh, that's what I really want to give more attention to that. Um, I, I'm trying to bring uh, some of the fundamental things about um, why we really uh, into certain profession or what is our uh, vision at a personal level and uh, what you want to really develop ourselves to be an effective HR professional. Uh, that drill down into more on our ability, competency, skill and so on and so forth. So to drive that direction, who I am and what is that I am really looking for myself and for my organization. Um, that is where I just want to bring a small video. Connect up there. Okay. Otherwise, you can go to third slide. I'll just start. So today, agenda is just uh, for me, uh, what is the HR function, how it has been really evolved over a period of time, and what really is changing in the uh, world of HR, basically, what we are really looking forward in the HR, so that how we can align as a HR professionals our competency and our ability on that. And some of the core competencies, I'm not getting into more about the technicality of creating competency, efficiency, or the level of uh, assessing competency, that part I'm not getting into that. But at the very high level, what are the key critical competency at the broader level and functional level and leadership level? I will just basically touch up on that and we will have some question and answer. Uh, I was really inspired by uh, Simon Sinek video. You can go and check that in uh, YouTube. It is really available. Uh, he has written a book called Start With Why. Um, what basically he is at, as an, human, as an individual, or as a human, what is our purpose? What is our life goal? It's as simple as that. It is not about that, um, uh, no, getting into a peak of the Himalaya. It is not about that. But as an individual, what is that something you are really thinking about yourself and your family or the country or your profession? That is a basically purpose it should dream. Purpose should really drive us. So what you really want to achieve at the personal level and at the professional level is the key point where you really get self-motivation. It is not that something an organization will drive you or your um, manager will drive you or the external world will drive you. But everybody will come with the, their own you know, vision or the purpose. Why am I re really here and what I really want to achieve it. So that is a critical point, one we need to really uh, ask ourselves. So what do we really believe as an individual? So that really directs us. So that is the point I really want to make it. And once you identify your goal or the purpose, how do you want to drive yourself? How do you want to really achieve it? What mechanism or the process you want to follow it? Maybe you go and talk with uh, maybe Anand Ramaya, sir, or maybe... SN Muthi, sir, or maybe different kind of people if you want to really build your skill around the competency on the higher and more on people negotiation, you can really build upon that. But do you have that clarity of that what you really want to do in your career or what you want to really achieve in your professional? So then you can identify your process and put your specific actions on that when and how and who are the stakeholders who you, you are going to manage on that how you can get the support from different stakeholders, multiple people. So that really drives to achieve your goals. And obviously when you put things in a very systematic way, what, when and how, results probably will be more positive. You are going to, though you may fail, but you know how not to do the things again by doing this simple exercise. And uh, that is where you can get the result proof and that can lead you what you really want to achieve in your career or a personal life. So that is a one piece of information I wanted to start with that. So this we all, we are all know, maybe the people who are just started the career in the HR, probably that is the context I just wanted to keep uh, this in slide because we have a group of people, very diverse people coming from um, SK Ravi sir to uh, as good as uh, Devraj has started one year, two years before the career. So uh, as a HR and administrative function, we 
if we started as a kind of a admin support or facility management or cafeteria security management and slowly we moved into a labor management uh, started participating in the discussion with the business uh, try to understand the business and the context and bring the hr uh, into bridging achieving the you no know, bigger perspective of the business so now we reached a where level hr is considered as one of the strategic partner in the business you would have heard called like a, a people champion is a new title people called our strategic partner hr business partner is a strategic word been used to title the human resource professionals those days have gone though we still have a fundamental or basic things we are fighting but the expectation has been drastically changed the earlier and the today expectation is completely changed from the hr folks and that is where i think we have to start thinking about that but if we don't really understand the the shift has been happened then we will be in the same old way of thinking it but the management and the expectations have been drastically changed so now in this context what are the new roles of hr and in definitely we are speaking today i am focusing more on capability building the predominantly we can see what really uh, we look into that in an organization human capital developer right it may be as simple as a blue collar employees or the shop floor employees or maybe you find someone a successor identify a potential successor for your ceo right so that is the that, that is the way you look into that you build the talent in the organization that is for the future and the long term point of view and understanding the business and drive the business through the man through through the human resource intervention that is where you play the role as a strategist right that is only possible if you can understand business more about the business and the market and the product and the competition it is no more just getting into a, a mundane thing mundane things what we generally we do it and being a talent manager it is not just i what i spend uh, you know said human capital developer it is more about the long term orientation but what is that today is required that is basically about the being a talent manager look at that to, today talent landscape vis a vis the business requirement and and when we talk about the executor definitely we need to do all the execution it may be a, as good as a hr administration operations it simple as canteen or maybe a transportation or maybe operation best way of onboarding of boarding all those things are the execution point of view so uh, as a leader we hr leaders we need to keep this execution point to the human capital development and the building both short term and the long term so uh, this is every slide let us not get into too much about that why i have added this slide unless we really get into what kind of business we are into what kind of product we are into what kind of service we are into we will not really able to appreciate why organization is doing certain things in a certain way to see given example uh, there are some industries or there are maybe some co companies maybe let's i'll just give an example of walmart their business focus is more on being very very competitive in the world it means whoever comes to the walmart he picks he comes in the intention that products are available at very competitive cost i don't use as a cheap very competitive cost so which i may not get in other mart right that is a direction business uh, vision is all about now all of us are being in hr we are being a champion of the human resources you need to really align your all activities whether you acquire the manpower or develop the manpower or retain the manpower on that vision right but if you don't align with that there is a misfit that is a point number 1 and definitely the friction will happen and we are we are going in we are thinking in one direction and management or the business is thinking in another direction so that is where in a, as simple as possible to understand what is the business we are really into right is it uh, our focus is on a premium product let's say someone is working for an apple or google their focus is totally different he goes and hires people from the iits right and uh, some of company let's say my organization i don't really go and hire iits right
because my attention is not that bringing uh, you know, cutting edge technology what Google or Apple is thinking about. So I go somewhere tier two or tier three colleges and bring the people and onboard them and develop them, right? So unless I really appreciate what the business we are into and bring the HR practices or the process or the people in line with, uh, we will not be able to do a justice, justice to our role and also to the people. So in that way, uh, I just give an example. There is a, you can see uh, there are three categories of organization we can definitely see. There someone is like a cost leader, which I was giving as a Walmart or XYZ. And someone is a prospector or differentiator and another one is an analyzer. So the differentiator is always go to the market first. Take an example of Apple, right? So then he will bring more product, innovation and all. So if we are working in that kind of organizations, we need to really differentiate people also according to that, right? Or if you are working for a cost leader, it's as simple as that we are working for a simple textile industry where we export most of the product to European and other countries, then it is every piece is important and cost is very competitive, right? Then we also try to hire, I will not go and uh, get into a MEI polytechnic. Maybe I will go somewhere in uh, uh, Chikmangalore or Raichur and bring our ITI, ITI people, right? So that is where we really look into that, what is the business we are into and what kind of people we are going to hire and develop in the organization. That's another small information. So now this, uh, recently I've gone through this case study actually, that's why I just thought of share with you. What is really changing in the landscape of human resources? Now, I think uh, Santosh Rav also mentioned that there is a diversity, uh, there is a multi-faced workforce. Today, in our organization, we can see five generations people are working together. You agree with me or not? Now, actually, we are working. Four, five generations of people are working. It means all generation people have a different kind of expectation. Let's, we hired some graduate engineers and he is looking something, want more communication, more excitement, engagement, more creativity. Look, in personal level, looking to build some relationship or try to build family. So that is where that person is really looking about it. So he, he is not thinking about to retire in our organization, right? Okay, but most of us have spent maybe 10, 15 years in one organization. So then you've come to the middle level of the people, I is looking more about how can I increase my compensation, my skill, promotion, bigger organization, that is what is the middle level guys thinking. Someone who has already at the age group of 50, is thinking more about meaningful, right? I have done enough. Everything is settled, personal life is settled, I have a basic things, Maslow's hierarchy theory. So what is that I am really looking now? I am looking more on, you know, meaningful, leisure, well-being, those kinds are, you know, playing very important to the different people in a different organization. So do we really look into that as an HR professional? For that, we really look different way and we need to really build our own skills and competency in that aspect, actually. We need to appreciate all these kind of generation and accordingly, we need to work with them. And Hedging is not about for our context, it is more about the Western and the European context. One of the studies says, by 2045, the white people will no more be a majority people in America. It means different kind of diversified people are taking into the uh, organization, uh, they are getting into the organization. So, sooner or later it can happen for India also, but anyway, we have very long way to go it. But that is a kind of changes, demographical changes is happening uh, across the global and there are scarcity of the skills. How, how much ever we say, we say around, government data says 6.7% is our unemployment, but it may be much more than that. But today still, we struggle for certain skills and competency. There are many organizations, probably you will definitely understand and do it. There may be simple as a welder may not be available, plumber may not be available at the very basic uh, level. And some of the organizations which I look for some competency last nine months, I really not got it. Right? Particular competence in my organization. Nine months after searching also, I have not got it. And for two years, three years, the expectation is also very high. 
you may not really believe for two, three years, 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs salary is also people are not available. It means certain skills are not really available. That scarcity also we are really facing it. So as an HR person, now our competency is to about build this kind of competency within the organization. So that is where we need to really understand it. And jobs and careers are really redefined. What I mean here, uh, you would have heard recently, uh, Reliance is getting into the geofinance uh, business, right? There are many banks, they were conventional banks, now they are getting into a crypto business, insurance business. The, if we are the part of the HR, we are driving this kind of, you know, in the organization, they are really converging their business into a multiple other areas of business. So our job is that people are not really available out there in the market. If someone you want to start in crypto or a different new domain, people are not available. So HR competency is to develop this kind of resources. I was reading another article where Amazon has, uh, they wanted to restructure people and their warehouse, they have a, more people. They want to get into a new business. One of the healthcare company is training those excess warehouse people in the healthcare business. So they are reskilling the people regularly. So that context, we need to really look into that as a HR guys. And company will get serious pragmatic about skills. I mentioned about it. Days have gone where we were looking about the title or the role. Now it is more about the skill. What skill you bring into the table? What skill is a, uh, really required for my organization? Do we have that skill for today and tomorrow? Or is it available in the market? I should develop it, or where should I go and bring those kind of skills? So skill has become more important than the uh, title or the role or the job. And we would have heard about the employee experience. It is not just only recently we talk about the hybrid working. Uh, it is about how we can create the meaningful engagement in the organization, right? Many organizations have withdrawn their work from home may not be applicable most of us since we are coming from more on the uh, shop floor management but it is much behind the hybrid working people has to look into the experience point of view and uh, now i see some of the organizations have a sustainability leader hr sustainability leader. i didn't really knew this earlier that's why i just thought share with you all people sustainability leader he reports to a senior executive his job is to ensure whether people are get a fair pay equal pay, fair pay, and minimum basic things are taken care. There should not be too much of differentiation within the role and within the organization. That is more about the uh, uh, women development point of view, harassment point of view. The person who looking after this kind of uh, role, that is about the people sustainability which is emerging now. And uh, the leadership is ongoing. Uh, ongoing uh, focus for the HR uh, community where they keep revisiting the leader who really bring the direction, vision to the organization and take next level to the organization. And new model of performance is more about, we all know, right? We say once in a year we set the performance goals and we review it. But what is really emerging more about it? How do you really ensure that regular uh, conversation happens between an individual and the manager and they coach them on regular basis. There are many technology have been emerged in that area. That is about the performance management. And uh, yeah, rewards and the pay structure is another, another emerging things. What is really changing it? Some of the organization, conventionally we ask your salary is low and uh, either employee will come and approach us or the manager will come and approach us. But some of the more proactive organization, what they are doing, if they found your salary is low, par with the market, we saw we internally, they're just rising their salary and sending the paycheck. Right? That is the level some of the organizations are looking at it. So it means uh, HR is very proactive and looking, understanding the landscape of the talent and the compensation. That is very important also for us. Um, Productivity will become an essential measure. Uh, whatever we will and we say, unless we bring better efficiency with each and every individual, organization will not be able to sustain for longer time. And uh, 
yeah, growth in flow uh, in the flow of work will become more focused on corporate learning. It is about more on you know reskilling, uh, getting into the uh, new skills for the organization, developing the people. So and uh, the recruiter is a very critical role in this kind of uh, changes, which we always undermine this kind of a job. But it is one of the critical job to bring this kind of talent to the organization. So keeping that in the whatever the uh, changes happening or the expectation is happening in the uh, space, what are the core competencies are required for all of us? That is the main point I'm just uh, driving it now. So we can see fundamentally we need to have uh, five important competencies. These are called core competencies. That may be business acumen. We should know about the data literacy, digital competency, and people advocacy and the execution and excellence. And the, we will have a specialist competency. What I mean specialist competency, someone may be an industrial relation manager, he will have a set of competency. Someone may be a talent acquisition person, he may have a set of competency. Someone may be a talent manager, he will have a set of competency. But these five competency become a fundamental. And in addition to that, we also will have some leadership competency. So the next slide, let us see what is briefly about this competency. What I mean by uh, business acumen, someone who can be able to interpret the business, understand the business, and uh, uh, understand the customer base, understand the overall organization direction is a key critical competency for all of us, and understand the data analytics, bringing data into the decisions. And there is a difference between uh, digital agility and the data literacy. Digital agility is more about you understand the technology and apply those technology to the human resource function. But data literacy is about you interpreting the data. Your capacity to interpret the data is the more important. And people advocacy is a part of our continuous job, being a HR manager or IR manager. We need to advocate uh, for on behalf of people with the management. Uh, various things will come. Maybe it may be as good as your negotiation skill, your communication skill, uh, building the trust. Those are very, very critical in part of the people advocacy. And uh, we need to have uh, efficiency in our execution. That is the operation skill where we need to really have masters always. And special competency, the attraction, what I say is the talent acquisition. We'll have a set of competency. And um, more about the talent and the culture building, what we have been speaking about from morning to now. And someone have a digital HR and people operation or HR operations. And this leadership competency will become a common for us, which is leading self, understanding more about the self, and leading others and also lead the organization. These broadly the competency what I am really um, thinking about, which is going to helpful for all of us. Uh, one of the competency I just took for our uh, no, discussion point of view because time is the constraint for us to see each and every competency. So when you say business competency, which I was mentioning about, uh, can you able to interpret the external trends, market trends, business trends? Can you connect with the business and the HR? And in that you can see the context and the commercial and the customer knowledge and, and the strategy and how we are going to co-create it. And each one also you can see how we you know, define and we can map all of us, whether I am I at the novice, basic, competent, or advanced level. And afterwards, you can put your own individual development plan, how we can develop this kind of competency, whether through a regular formal training like this, or maybe you take up some additional project, you will work on that. So, and this competency has become really a critical for all of us. One of the uh, competency I just wanted to share about the special competency I just took about the attraction means basically talent acquisition or the recruitment person. So what competency he needs to have more about the employer branding and he needs to know about the talent acquisition and the onboarding, right? That is a common competency he needs to have besides the fundamentally other leadership and the functional competencies. Another uh, competency just I took is about someone who is a talent manager in an organization. So what is that competency you need to have more about the leadership development and the talent development is a basically fundamental competency. Uh, I just took an example so that you can really connect what I really spoke about here. And I say these five are the basic common competency for all of us. 
and then we'll have some specialist competency and also leadership competency. So we can just uh, read this case where uh, Renuka Prasad is an HR generalist and he works for a mid-sized manufacturing company. He leads a team of six HR professionals. And he uses context interpretation to understand the market of the business, what really he is into. And it means uh, their company and their intervention, what they really need, how the company is really tracking and progressing on that. That is where the context interpretation of the business acumen is going to help this individual. And he also translates these interventions into a tangible actions, putting into the KPI or action plan using some data driven skills. That is a competency. And also, uh, he tracks the result regularly using the technological part of it. Digital agility will come into a picture. And uh, he also responsible for compensation and benefits and uh, uses competency when he discusses uh, how to drive the employee retention or the engagement point of view. And definitely, when you are driving on the interventions on the people side, you need to influence people, whether it is a IR or the HR or any other talent interventions, you need to have that you know, uh, competency. And also he leads a team. That is where I was speaking about the leadership. Leads for self and leads others. So we can relate all this competency for a different role and different context, but level may vary. Right? The someone maybe at the entry level is context interpretation, maybe at the very novice or basic level, but someone who is a Adding the organization as HR, he may be at, need to know at least advanced level, right? So that is where is important of this competency. Uh, the second example, a senior HR professional, some of us also here, you can relate to yourself. Uh, Anand is a senior HR executive in a multinational FMCG company, and uh, she is a chief learning officer. And what she really, how, how she is going to use this competency. So using data and analytics translation, she has identified number of critical skills required for an organization to develop. And uh, she uses our problem solving, risk mitigation, and uh, co-creating the uh, organization uh, uh, strategy, and build the deep knowledge on those skills and develop the people according to that. and. Uh, she has an experienced facilitator and the leader. Uh, she also responsible for leadership development, coaching and conflict management and so on and so forth. So this is a simple example of uh, how these competency can be translated into the real time actions. Right? So with this, uh, I am done with uh, my short presentation. Uh, we can discuss if there are any questions. You can add also your experiences also you can add.